second, thanks to Sparks family for inviting me out today. Uh, I typically don't do much on 420. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Grisolia, and they call me Grant. Uh, I am the creator of the Facebook advocacy page and YouTube channel called Something Has to Change and Now. Because something really does have to change. And now, Dr. William O'Shaughnessy was treating epilepsy among many other conditions. In 1850, in the United States, 171 years ago, we knew cannabis was medicine. 166 years before my son died from the sudden unexpected death in epilepsy, we knew. You see, he, he suffered with seizures most of his life from about the age of nine. But at the time that he first started having them, uh, he didn't have them like most people would have seizures. He may have one and then not have another for six months. It might be 18 months and then just wham, all of a sudden out of the blue. He didn't have any warning signs, no auras, no nothing of the like. But because of their infrequency, the doctors and his mother and I both decided that it was for the best not to medicate at that time because of, of course, the side effects that go along with medication. When he started driving, he decided he wanted the meds because he wanted to feel confident when he got behind the wheel of a vehicle that there was a less of a chance that he would seize behind the wheel and possibly injure or maybe even kill someone else. And that was his true concern. So we, we got him to another physician, we got him retested and they started him on some meds. The immediate thing that happened was his seizures became much more frequent and much more severe. The exact opposite of what you would expect a medication to do. And so this went on for a period of about three and a half years. And they, they, every time they changed his meds, it continued to get more frequent, more severe to the point where right before he passed, he was having seizures every week. Obviously the meds weren't helping. He couldn't move to Colorado or somewhere where there was legal cannabis at the time because by this point in time, he had become dependent upon other people. Because you see, the exact thing he started taking medication for is what happened. He seized behind the wheel two different times. Uh, you know, he stopped driving, so he was 100% dependent upon someone else to get him to work, to the store, to the doctor, whatever. We had talked about six months before he passed about the possibility of cannabis. He came to me and asked me had I heard anything and I really didn't know anything, even though in all honesty, I was a pothead for 30 years prior to that. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, my, my honest answer to him was, I don't know, but we'll find out. And if you want to try it, well, damn sure get it. You know, the sad fact is in, in all his genuineness and the fact he was a 23 year old man by this point in time, he simply refused to break the law. And so we lost him. It was after his funeral when uh, I got back home and I had changed clothes and I sat down at my computer at a complete and total loss of what to do now, obviously. When I typed in the search bar, two words, marijuana and epilepsy. I hesitated for a minute and then I hit enter. And the first thing that I found that, that intrigued me was a clinical study completed in the United States of America using extracts of cannabis to treat epileptics that had a better than 50% success rate. And I started to scratch my head. I said, how can this be? I'm reading on and I see that this study was not only completed in the United States of America, but it was completed in 1947. <laughs> I'll say that again. 
in the United States in 1947. You can imagine the emotions and the feelings that started to swell with inside me. Then the next thing that happened was I started to think about the differences between extracts and science and methods from 1850 to 1947 to 2016. It was at that point when I decided that uh, I had one goal left in life. I have spent, ever since 2016, every waking moment I have outside of having to earn a living to trying to educate and agitate and motivate everyone to get involved so that together we can end this prohibition of a plant so that no other parent has to needlessly lose a child as I have. So that no other family member has to needlessly lose someone that's close to them because they refuse to break laws about plants. It is time that the government no longer has the authority to stipulate what kind of plants we grow in our gardens. <laughs> yep. right. yep. It is time that people have the right to choose what kind of medicine they want to use for their conditions. It is time that we cease punishing people for a crime that has no victim. And it is time that the people stand up, stand together, and remind the politicians who they truly do answer to. I thank you for your time, I thank you for listening, and again, I thank the Sparks family for inviting me out.